Hello everybody, this is Daniel. Um, as you can tell, I got myself another guitar. Um, probably about three, four weeks ago. Um, so I thought I'd go ahead and talk about it. Um, as you can see, and as has been the case lately, I've been on PRS kick. This is, so this is a PRS uh, CE24. It is in, it's got pictures, video does not do it justice, but it's in a very gorgeous shade of uh, Fire Red Burst. So, um, I, I uh, kind of like my Santana, the standard, the standard uh, Santana SE, the double cutaway one. Got this one from a local shop, Eldorado Hills Music. They're on Reverb. Um, if you look them up, Eldorado Hills Music, or if you live in the area, please go check them out. They're by, uh, down there in Eldorado Hills. Um, it's just a really good store run by, uh, Cameron and Emily. Um, shout out to them. So, what happened was, I think around October, they got this guitar in. And, um, literally, I walked in the front door, and where the, where this one and where kind of the best PRSs are, are kind of way towards the back. Like you walk in, um, there's guitar stands everywhere. There's guitars hanging on the wall, the acoustics, and the and the hollow bodies here. And then you've got basses and various degrees of PRSs and Ibanezes and um, Yamahas and stuff. But on the very back of the wall, right by the uh, by the checkout counter, um, is their good stuff. They're good PRSs. They're higher end ones, ones that span about anywhere from fifteen hundred dollars till about till you get to the five thousand dollar plus range they have their cores their artists they have the s2s yet um and stuff like that anyway they got this guitar in and i just i was struck by the second i walked in because this fire red burst which again it's not really videos pictures don't do a lot of justice to um for me my problem with fire red burst has been um even though it says red in the name oftentimes based on pictures i've seen based on even um other prs guitars in this color i've seen it tends to be more black it tends to be a reddish brownish color or a reddish blackish color it's where the darker colors um seem to come out and the red less so this guitar struck me because it was not that um, I've been looking for red PRS's um, the only ones I've been able to find are blue or gray or black or yellow or green or some other almost any other color other than red is what I've been able to find um, which has been much to my own aggravation as a guy who likes red Red guitars, red anything. Um, I don't know if you can tell. I'm sitting on a red blanket on my couch. Um, so anyway, I just fell in love with this guitar. Um, I looked at it. And one thing that struck me. I'll see if, again, I'll do a close-up. I'll show you. You'll see if you can tell. The binding. It's Again, it's a little hard to tell. Maybe it's a little better at this angle here. It's not their white cream binding, which is typical on this guitar, on PRS guitars, or any guitars for that instance. This seems to either be either part of the top, or just they use this fake, or this, some call it fake, or natural binding. And that is ultimately, other than the top, the beauty of the top is, this is what sold me on this guitar. Because again, most every... Every other model of the CE24 I've seen has had a white cream binding, white or cream binding on here, which looks nice. But the fact that this is not white or cream, that's to me unique. And again, I haven't seen it in anywhere else. I haven't seen it in other models like this. The only one I've seen that has this with this kind of color is this exact guitar. So, yeah, I, I looked at it, thought about it, um, 
And, you know, eventually I went in. Um, I, so my guitar lessons are every Wednesday, so I think I went in on a Tuesday. Um, I saw the salesman there, Sebastian, and um, talked to him. I said, hey, look, I'm like, I, I, I've been seeing, I saw this a week or two ago. I'm like, I just got to try it. I got to run it through. I'm like, I'm very interested in buying it. And they're always very good. Like if, you know, if I ask them permission, hey, can I try this guitar? Can I try this one? Can I try that one? Um, they're very good about allowing me to do that. You know, they'll take you over to an amp and they'll give you a, a tuner, a clip-on tuner and a cord to plug in. I usually have my little a pedal board so I can test it through some stuff. So anyway, tried it out and I just fell in love with it. Um, the neck was a little wide. The fingerboard was a little wider than I'm used to. So I kind of had to get used to that. Um, but everything else was just wonderful. So... These are the 8515 pickups. These are the actual 8515 pickups. These are not the 8515S pickups, that the import ones that come on the SEs, which are still good. I really like them, but these are the actual American ones. And you can tell because they've got the square rectangular bobbins versus the rounded bobbins. Um, these pickups just sound amazing. I'll play it through my rig. Um, just the little pedal board I've got right in front of me here to give you some tonal sounds. But um, So this is a pattern thin neck. This one has pattern thin. Um, it's got the PRS locking tuners on it. Um, it's a 2021 model. Um, one thing I really like on that PRS does on their core line, and, and they do it on lines like these, and it's a little reverse because of imagery, but they hand write either like a sharpie or something like that. They write it in the pen, in pen, and then they write over it. So like mine is a 2021 model, and then I'm not quite sure how the rest of the numbering goes. But you know they'll put the year and then they'll do the rest of the date. And then what they do is this is satin or their nitro finish, I guess. So what they do is they write over it, and then they use the satin finish on the neck nitro or whatever and it protects it so i can't erase it i can't like lick my fingers and do it nope stay in there it's protected from the finish by the finish um you know i think it's a very nice personal touch it lets you know that somebody not just a machine or not yeah you know, like somebody actually touched your guitar you know it's the personal touch for it somebody you know, they didn't just take a little decal, water decal, or stamp and do it. They actually, somebody actually took the time to write in the serial number. Pretty nice. So, these are the A515S pickups that I was talking about. Or the A515, sorry, pickups. Um, you know, I've really fallen in love with um, the SC guitars, but... Um, this guitar is far and away better than any of my SEs. And that's a difficult statement as all three of my SEs are very, very good guitars. My standard 24, uh, my, both my Santanas, the, um, the single cut, the single cut Santana and the, um, and the regular double cut standard Santana. Both of them are amazing guitars, especially with the McCarty pickups I had put in. So anyway, it's got the two pickups. It's got um, the little three-way toggle, and it's got the volume and the tone, and you know, one volume, one tone, with a push-pull split coil, which allows you to get the single coil tones. You know, so typically, I think I've mentioned this before, typically in other guitars, I've never really liked the push-pull things. Um, they've usually just sounded weak, emaciated. Um, nobody's really seemed to get it right. Paul Reed Smith, I don't know how he does it, but it works. It, so, it doesn't sound like a Strat, it doesn't sound like a Telecaster, it doesn't sound like a P90. It sounds like its own thing. It's clearly a single coil. You will notice there is a noticeable drop in volume when you push, uh, when you put in single coil mode which I'll show you but it is its own thing and it does sound very very good um, 
It doesn't sound weak. It doesn't sound emaciated. It doesn't sound plushy. It just it doesn't. It just sounds very good. And it also, to my ears, doesn't sound biting. It doesn't sound bitey. Doesn't sound ice picky or anything of that nature. So enough of the yammering. Let's uh, just plug it in for a little bit of uh, sound here. So here, right now it's in humbucker mode, and I've got it on the neck pickup. Just gonna just do a couple little. Very, that's the neck pickup. Very clear, very nice sounding. Not too fat, not too bassy, but not too, not too bright or bitey either. Middle position, both the neck and the bridge. Again, humbucker position. Now the bridge position. Again, uh, clearly it's the bridge position. It's got more treble on it. But as you hear it, it's not too bright, not ice picky, not, you know, not something that, you know, not kind of like the hotter. These definitely are not hotter pickups. Now, what the way I would describe these, kind of like the SC counterparts, it's maybe like a PAF sounding pickup that's got a little more bite to it, a little more grit to it. Um, you know, it's kind of their evolution as they continue to evolve. P PRS continues to evolve the pickup creation process. Um, these were made with the TCI process where they take each pickup and, you know, they wind it to bring out the best sound of each guitar. So, um, and to my ears, it sounds fantastic. This, um, just an amazing guitar. So let's go ahead and, well, let's stay on the clean tones. But that's, uh, I've got the, uh, the push-pull engaged. So this is going to be the neck single coil. Noticeable volume drop, but again, not not extreme, but like you can tell, it's it's a single coil mode. Let's go to the middle. So this is the uh, uh, single coil, both the neck and the bridge pickups. Let's get to that bridge position. Again, great, uh, even single coil mode, not ice picky, not bright, not stabby, just give you that treble, that bite, and even in the scene coil mode, um, no distortion, it, you can hear it kind of start to push the amp, playing through my Vox AC4 TV, um, TV Mini, so it's a little 4 watt tube amp, and just as a comparison, here's the humbucker mode, again, no distortion, no pedals are engaged, but you can hear it starting to push the amp in a way that the that the neck pickup just is not going to. So let's go ahead and do some uh, uh, let's do some distorted tones. I'm playing a love pedal super lead. I've got the level at noon. I've got the drive maybe around two or three like in this position. 
Um, I've got the tone all the way up, and I've got the mids uh, switch set this way. Neck and uh, the middle position. Bridge. Now, let's go to single coil mode. And the reverse, let's go to bridge. Both positions, both pickups. Now, uh, neck pickup. Let's go humbucker mode. Let's go back to the humbucker mode. I just turned up on an Ultra Octaver by Behringer, just for some fun. That's neck, middle. Middle, and now bridge. Position it so I have the single coil mode, you know, the push pull pot pulled and uh, in the middle position. Still gets that, that quacky kind of uh, four position, th uh, two or four position on a strap. It's a little less muddled than it's less muddled than you would get out of those in between positions on a strap, but um, again, it still gives you a little bit of that add phase tone that we all uh, strap players all love. Let's turn on so I'm gonna turn on my tube screamer. The I think this is the the anniversary one. I can't remember if it's the. Like the 35th or the 40th or the 25th or something mm -hmm. anniversary. It's the little sparkly red one. So it's a Tube Screamer Overdrive Pro TS-808. Um, I've got the overdrive off. I basically set this up for clean. Tone all the way up, level all the way up, overdrive off. This will give you the clean tone. <laughs> Position. Again, single. I'm staying in single coil mode. Here's the the neck. Bridge. Let's go to humbucker mode. Bridge. So you can hear again, I, as you can see, I didn't do anything to it, but that bridge, like a typical bridge humbucker, is giving a little bit more push to the amp. So even just playing single note, li single note lines, you can start to hear that breakup of the amp. That uh, so many uh, of our classic rock heroes um, figured out early on. So, middle position. And neck position. 
position. So, this guitar, I think, if you buy it online, just even the regular one with the white binding, nothing special. And by the way, um, this was the same price as any other CE24. There was nothing, no higher price, nothing exclusive in terms of the pricing. Um, I think it's, I think the price, uh, double check it on Sweetwater Musicians, Friend Guitar Center, etc. I think it's about $22.99. I bought it um, on, so I, so what I did was I, so anyway, I think I kind of forgot my story. I went home um, after trying it and I went and I did the, I bought it on their Eldorado Hills music store on Reverb uh, because there I could do it through the Affirm uh, financing. I did that process real quick. Um, I was able to get approved for the affirm pricing within financing within a couple minutes, ten minutes, you know, after the sign up, etc. No problem. Um, so this ended up being, I think it's so they have the six months, the twelve months, eighteen, twenty four, and thirty six, or maybe it's twelve, eighteen, twenty four, thirty six uh, financing. I went ahead and did the. Um, Um, I went ahead and did the 36 month financing. Now what that, now what I'm going to do is kind of like first payment. What I already did is, I, uh, at 36 months is about 71 dollars, I think. Um, but that means that you're going to be paying a lot more. Um, I think it ends up being around three or 3200 with the the firm financing. Um, me, I'm just gonna try to do what I do with every other guitar that I get get through finance pricing I'm just gonna try to pay off early um, doesn't necessarily hurt to get the longer financing and then just pay more off and then get paid off early um, I hope um, I'm I think I'm sure firm is just like synchrony even though your amount when you look at may be bigger if, as long as you pay it off early, you should be able to, you know, you'll still be paying more, um, more in terms of the finance pricing, but, you know, as long as you pay off earlier, you should be able to escape some of the bigger costs. Anyway, so that's kind of how I had to do it. So right now I'm only 200 bucks into this guitar, so I'm gonna, gonna keep paying it off for a while. That means, uh, kind of a freeze on purchasing more guitars um, unless I'm buying tra unless I'm trading selling things like that you know sell some off get some money pay off this one or do just straight out trade do tra uh, straight out trades get a little trades plus cash that doesn't hurt anyway so I know I'm a bit rambling a bit but uh, so I just want to give you my thought I love this guitar. It's definitely one of my best guitars I own. Um, I would probably put it in number two. Uh, my first one being my Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s model. And then my third one would be my Gretsch. The only reason I put my Gretsch number three is because that's kind of a very specific sound. Whereas this guitar can get me um, a whole range of sounds. Um, even more than my Les Paul standard can. Um, it's, I mean, but this is just a beautiful guitar. But for me, it's not just about the eye candy, although the eye candy aspect of it is very helpful. It's definitely what sells you on it. Um, the sound, like you've heard, um, the multiple sounds I can get. Um, just the features. Um. Uh, this is a pre. This is a really decent price for a. So like, if you didn't even go through a firm, if you just pick one up at Guitar Center, your local store, buy it off the rack, just buy it then and there. Um, this is yeah a very good, affordable American-made PRS. Um, 
American made electronics, parts, pickups. This is, I think, the first model, the lowest price model you get where everything, hardware, the pickups, the body, everything is American. So you get the SE line, then you get the S2 line, which is um, the body and all this stuff is put together in the Maryland facility. But then the pickups and the electronics are export. Or like, you know, the SE stuff. The SE pickups, the SE electronics, which are perfectly fine. Then this is the first guitar, I think, that you get where you get into um, um, all American made. Every component, everything down to the wires, literally, um, is American made. Um, and I think it's the cheapest in the line where it's all American made. Like I said, it's a $22.99, I think, so $2,300. Um, and it's just a fantastic guitar. Um, I've been taking it to all my lessons. I've been having a hard time. There's days where I'm tired, but even then I'm still, like, I'll pick it up, I'll strum it, play a couple notes on it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Real quick, it comes with instead of the little brown gig bags that your SEs and your S2s are going to come in. It comes in this black gig bag. And it's, it's a little hard to see, but there's a head a thing. It's held in by Velcro. And this holds your headstock so your guitar's not, you know, moving around, jarring in the back. It's a little, it secures it a little bit more. And you kind of get the case candy, so you get a warranty card. You get things about... PRS in the company, you get a sticker, that went immediately on my car. Um, something I should put on your radar to keep an eye out for is um, mine came with the incorrect tremolo, but luckily my store, the store I bought it from, I reached out to the guy immediately because I saw that the tremolo was not fitting in there. Um, for the SEs, the CEs, and the S2s, you want a molded trim. Make sure that yours has the molded trim, which should look, try to find the best angle to do it like that. I don't know if it'll focus this ticket out a little bit. So there'll be a little bevel on the end. Um, some of these cases, just a heads up, have, even if the pack says molded trim, it's becoming it's been coming with the core trim, which instead of this little bevel at the end, it's just flat. It's just a flat, um, just a flat end thing, and it, it's a little thicker, so it just does not fit. So I was able to contact my uh, uh, the guy who, uh, in my store where I got this. Um, I was able to contact him, and he said, "Don't worry." He goes, we've got, he's got, he goes, I've got a lot of these tremolos and these packs because I guess there were some that were missing or some that had the wrong trim. So um, his rep, uh, sales rep, um, cust whatever, customer service rep at uh, PRS sent him a bunch of packs and, um, and we were able to get the right one. I waited till my next guitar lesson the following Wednesday, got it, no problem. This tremolo um, does stay in way better tune than the SE trim. Um, I noticed with the SE trims, um, there's a little bit of problems with the stability when you use it, even lightly. This one stays pretty solidly in tune with the tremolo. I mean, don't expect to do like a EV, a Van Halen style dive bombs like endlessly just or, or Steve Vai or Satriani style bends. But if you just do a little wiggle here and there and, you know, accentuate your notes or your solos, it should hold pretty well. So I know this is a long video, um, but I just kind of want to give my take on the CE24. Um, this was a pricey purchase for me, um, but to me it's a worth it purchase. This is definitely good guitar. I don't regret buying it in the slightest bit. Um, I can't think of anything I'd really change about it. Um, the only thing I'd probably change nitpicky is these knobs here. Instead of these, I love the lampshade knobs, but I probably, and maybe if I can, I'll buy some. I'd put the amber ones on, not these clear ones. So, 
again, that's just a little nitpicky thing. Other than that, stylistically, sound wise, tonality wise, you know, spec wise, I don't see anything here I would change. Um, this guitar, I think it's going to be is that already in my top ten of of my guitars. That's just like the top three of ones that I'm not going to sell. You know, there's a list of them, maybe about ten of them right now that I'm just uh, no way I'd sell. There's a bunch of other ones I love, but I could trade, I could sell if I needed to. This one's one of the ones that I'm definitely keeping. So um, feel free to comment. Um, ask questions. I'll do the best I can to answer any questions you may have. Um, share your own stories of the CE24 or a CE22. Just the CE or the Amer or just PRS as a company. PRS, any, any PRS related stuff. Um, so, or even questions about, because I'm sure, I'm sure if anybody's going to ask them, it's going to be this versus a Gibson whatever. SG, Les Paul, whatever. Put those down there too. So, um, for now, this is Daniel signing off. Um, I hope you got something out of this long video. But, uh, yeah, if you can, definitely go get yourself a CE24. I'd highly recommend it. It's a good, if you're just, if you're getting into the company, or if you've been investing in the company through their SE line and or their S2 line, and you're thinking, okay, what's the next step up? the CEs, and I could not highly recommend these guitars enough. Wonderful guitar. Um, I'm looking at probably taking a step back. Um, so the next guitar I'm looking at getting is an S2 McCarty 594 single cut. If I can, again, pay this guitar off first and then look for the right 594 McCarty single cut. So... S within the S2 line, so, but other than that, um, yeah, this is, this is amazing American PRS, so, there you go.